This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company based out of Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our season would take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, let's see, great, great seasonings over at the madcanadianbbq.com and save even more when you use that promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Uh, great seasonings here, such as the coffee and queue, perfect for <laughs> perfect for this morning as we're recording really early. More on that later. Uh, <laughs> the How about some how about some Cajun, maybe to spice up your morning, Jared? Or or even the, um, what is it here? The, the two border. The yeah. two border you like on your on your eggs and bacon. You're damn right I do. Uh, or, or you can really spice it up with the four horsemen, you know, just to really wake you up. <laughs> so if, you, if you need it, sometimes you need to do a little bit of the two border, but then you also want to have a little bit of sweats. So you got to maybe just do a little bit of four horsemen on top of that two border. Yep, absolutely. Check out those and much, much more over at themedcanadianbbq.com. Again, that is themedcanadianbbq.com. Sloopcast 10 for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle mentioned uh, the coffee in Q, and you might be wondering, gee, I wonder how he gets that coffee flavor in that coffee in Q. Well, the answer is simple. There's coffee in it. There's coffee in it. It is not some coffee flavoring. No, 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 no. It's, it's actual coffee. In fact, if you want to try some of that actual coffee, like in a cup, uh, you can buy it yourself over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, it's the cast iron. If you're curious, uh, if you want to pick up a bag of that cast iron, which is a medium roast coffee made with 100 percent single origin Honduran Arabica beans. That's right. Single origin beans. Uh, maybe that does not mean a lot to you, but if you know a lot about sort of the international politics of uh, all of that, it can sometimes be behind the coffee trade. Uh, that's like high integrity, high moral coffee right there. On top of that, all of the beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Integrity is what the Iron Bean Coffee Company is based off of. So know that when you're buying coffee from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, that you are doing it with the highest morals possible. And what else would you expect from an Ohio-based veteran-owned company? You can find the you can find the cast iron and a bunch of other great coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Kyle, up here, I did it again feel like I nailed that read, which means the next two reads, much like last week, did great on the opening read, then bombed the next two. Actually, I don't remember how my third read went, but I know I really bombed that second read. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> welcome all. Welcome all. Thanks for joining us on this fine Sunday morning. Morning. <laughs> Again, Kyle's making me get up early. Shouldn't have to set an alarm on a Sunday, Kyle. Uh, I have to, or so I'm going to sleep all day. <laughs> I sometimes that's necessary. Maybe as much as I've worked this week, I earned a little bit of sleep in. But no, well, I'm so yeah. I'm so I'm still a little jet lagged going sure all the way are. to California and back. Yeah, not fun. That's why we had to record early last week is because Kyle had a plane to catch. I don't know why we're doing it this week. Maybe he'll answer for that. But um, uh, I. Uh, no, he's maybe. not going to. We'll see. He's oh, not all right, let's, let's get into the episode. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? I have no complaints. Except I actually have snow. many complaints. I have, I have so many complaints, but I'm not going to air any of those uh, complaints on the podcast right now. What about the snow? I am. We're not doing the weather thing. I. I no. no. 
Listen. <laughs> I just needed to get a reaction out of you. That's all. <laughs> that's all I want is get a reaction out of you. If we're so hard, happy. right? <laughs> it's so hard to get a reaction out of me because it's not like I'm loud and opinionated or anything, right? <laughs> yeah. We didn't have any snow for the entire month of March, which was like the first time that's happened in a very long time in central Ohio. And then Mother Nature comes in and be like, oh, no, let me get one more blanket of snow. And we got a blanket, blanket of snow. Of snow. A, not, not like a flurry. We got a yeah. blanket of snow. Yeah, there was like a good like three inches in northwest Ohio. So okay, that's was... enough. We're done. No more weather. No more weather. No more weather. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all in the South thinks it's funny until you realize how much this screwed over the crop season. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It's absolutely bad for crop season. So yeah. y- y'all, y'all in the South can can snicker all you want but when when the groceries are more expensive this year maybe you <laughs> won't be snickering <laughs> all right what do you mean it already is uh all right uh it'll get uh, worse <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right um we had a few things to get into we are officially everybody oh are you gonna say it are we in the wasteland we are in the wasteland yes <laughs> oh we still got the draft this weekend we do have the draft this weekend. Um, we'll cover that. We'll cover that next week. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't feel like that there's a need to do a pre and a post. There's so many, like you can literally everyone on the internet has a blog where they do a mock draft. You don't need one from us as well. That's it's just, it's egregious no. at this point. We're not going to do it. Uh, we will talk about a post. We will do post draft uh, and we'll do that like Ohio state centrically, of course. So we'll do that. But we're we're not gonna do a we're not gonna do a pre-draft. Last thing you need is another pair of idiots on the internet predicting where someone's gonna go in in the draft. There's Instead, thousands and thousands of people doing that. You don't need it from us. Instead, you'll have a pair of idiots talking about college football expansion. Oh yeah, because that that is new fresh territory that no one ever talks about, and you definitely don't need our opinions on it. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, we do have to kind of touch on the draft. Um, we're not going to, but sort of, uh, news breaks this week that Justin Fields has epilepsy, uh, which is a big deal because seizures can be brought on via head trauma, via, you know, blows to the head. Um, Mm -hmm. one one that, one that comes to mind and I think our, um, our slip cats brought it up before we were. Um, actually, I think that was a question. In it's in here. our Ask Sloop yep. Cats. Um, Duncan, um, in light of Justin Fields' epilepsy breaking news, whatever happened to that Cincinnati kid in mid play of um, who had that seizure? Yeah, uh, if you guys was, remember, it was a few years ago. It was in 2019 when, when Ohio State took on Cincinnati. It was like right in the middle of the play. Yeah, KJ Hill went, I think it was KJ Hill, uh, whoever was the slot receiver. Uh, went out to block him, sees something is wrong, and you know, thankfully, doesn't because he he could have just lets up. Yeah, he lets up and just yeah. Uh, you, you can tell just by his body language that he was confused what was happening. Luckily, or maybe not luckily, but um, astutely might be the better word. Doesn't hit him because I'm sure that's the last thing you need in the middle of a seizure. And uh, but wh- whatever happened to that Cincinnati player? Um, I, I, I don't know what happened with him medically. I know he continued to play college football. Uh, I know he did transfer. Uh, I, I did a little bit of research on this one cause I wanted to get the answer correct. Um, but, and of course I, I have since closed the tab. So what, what, but I, but he transferred to a smaller school. I believe it was like Missouri state, something yes. like that. Uh, he was in Alabama. You have originally committed to Alabama ends up in Cincinnati, ends up in Missouri state. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure why well, I'm not sure. I don't want to say that, but maybe the epilepsy had, had something to do. Cause I mean, obviously that's a reverse trajectory of what someone who commits to Alabama would want. Um, I, so I mean, he continued to play college football. Epilepsy is a spectrum I mean, as as we can talk about with Justin Fields, uh, Justin Fields apparently has it and no one noticed. So there are people with severe epilepsy and there are people with 
less severe epilepsy. Most as most things are, it sits on a spectrum. Um, it is manageable to some degree, again, depending upon where you're sitting on that spectrum, but it, it, it can be triggered. It can be brought on, made more severe episodes can be triggered through head trauma. So if you're seeing Justin Fields slip in the draft, it's because there are people out there who might be concerned that this could, you know, maybe one or two concussions, much like Andrew Luck, not that Andrew Luck had epilepsy, but you know, you take one or two concussions and maybe it's, you know, it's a shortened career. And one of the reasons why you take a quarterback so early in a draft is because it you sometimes see it as a 15 year investment. And one of the reasons why amazing running backs fall in the draft is yeah. because sometimes teams only see that as a five or six year investment. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough. And I don't know where Justin Fields falls in that spectrum. I have to hope for his sake and suspect because it just after years, none of us ever, it never made mainstream stories. We never saw any evidence of it on the field that he's fairly low on that spectrum and that it can be managed. But it, it is, of course, a concern because when you draft a quarterback third overall, which, you know, San Francisco could very well do. You want that to be a 10 to 15 year investment, not a five year investment. And, you know, one or two concussions that are severe enough and you you just don't know. Yep. You definitely especially especially with how mobile he is. Right. And how and him maybe and we've seen it so many times where you have a young quarterback out in the NFL and trying to make plays and just doesn't have it doesn't have his head on a swivel and then takes one too many shots there. Yeah. So it's uh it, it just unfortunately is what it is. Right now, there's, you know, there's no cure for epilepsy. There are treatments for it, but there's there's no cure for it. Um, so, you know, it 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 sucks. I and I don't necessarily know what else to say about that, but just know if he's falling in the draft, that that's probably why. Mm -hmm. Yep. But either way, I think I think he'll have a I think he'll have a good career in the NFL, bar any injuries or anything if all goes well from what we've seen in his short term, in his short tenure at Ohio state, I think he's going to have a good career in the NFL level. I I mean, yeah, he has again, sort of barring injury, yep. but unfortunately that, that barring injury now has a big asterisk next to it, which we didn't know about until this week, barring yep. injury. It was like, Oh, what are you talking about? Justin Fields has been healthy all the time. He's not an injury risk. Well, he is now. Yep. He is and, now. and that that that's that has to play into the decision making. And that sucks. Yep. All right, Kyle. Well, news well, came well, out. Well, well, good news with um with Justin Fields. He actually got himself um an endorsement deal um earlier in the week, too. So he's man. at least getting, getting some cat some money <laughs> right now. Um, it's, it's like some sort of like energy drink. I, I forget what it was exactly, but it was like an energy drink. Yeah. They don't pay us. They pay Justin Fields. They don't pay us. Yes. So yeah. there you go. All right. Uh, one of our favorite things we love to talk about ever since we started this, um, our show here, what was mm -hmm. it? How many years ago? Uh, 2015 was our first season. So we're in season six. So yeah, it would be almost six years ago. We're we're in uh, yeah we're in our sixth year. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what we we did talk about weather. Well, actually, we're in our, our fifth year. It'll be six years in a couple yeah. months. Well, we we do we do talk about weather, Sun Card. But what, what's another what's another thing that we like to talk about here in the Slipcast? Well, black other jerseys. Than, other than weather, <laughs> black jerseys, black stripes, uh, position what, battles. Hmm? I, position battles we like to talk about <laughs> position battles what's so, what is something that's always brought up every year and it's definitely gotten some 
some more attention this last week. I'm I, I don't I'm not going to let a bunch of dead air sit on the podcast, so I'm just going to say it. College football expansion. Yes, college football expansion has not necessarily <laughs> Big Ten becoming the Big Sixteen. <laughs> we have also talked about that a lot. Yes, that is true. Yes, but college football expansion. Um, it's come up again uh, in recent news here. Um, there's a working group of possibility having expanding it to maybe six, eight, 12, 16 teams. Yeah. According to the college football committee, they, they put out a statement. Um, they're working uh, with a group. Uh, uh, a management committee continues to support and believe the 14 playoff is uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, in its analysis, the working group has reviewed some 63 possibilities for change. This includes six, eight, 10, 12, 16 team options, each with a variety of different scenarios. What? Sun card, you, you slacker. You can't give us crap and then leave. I'm just giving you crap. <laughs> I'll, I'll just have right. fun. Uh, so where, where are we at? Like, so we're, we're currently what four teams with no real, um, no, no, no real selection criteria is, is currently mm-hmm. where we are. You know, it's like, well, going undefeated matters, except when it doesn't and winning your conference matters, except when it doesn't. And so we realistically we're, we're sitting at a four team playoff with no hard and fast rules. Mm-hmm. That, that's where we sit right now. And, and it's always changing every year. Like they they may have one set of In expectations defense. one year, but then goes completely in, not in the complete other direction, but just goes, and has completely different sets of criteria the next year. It's never consistent. In the defense of the playoff committee, they are changing over personnel. So if it doesn't always feel consistent, it's because it's not always the same people in the room. Different people are going to have different priorities for, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and, And I get that we as fans want some sense of control some sense of predictability. And when that control and predictability is taken away, we don't like it. The biggest, the biggest thing for me though, is consistency. Just always having some sort of consistency with who's going to be in. I, and and I don't think you're going to get that unless you actually put criteria down on paper. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) I I I think with, with the option to, have more teams in the playoffs, you could have a little bit more consistency. Agreed. Um, more, more so with, let's say they do eight teams. Let's say they yeah. double it, go to eight teams. Well, then you can, you can go there and say, Hey, power five conference, power five conferences. You each get a minimum of one. Your champion gets in. I have always said my playoff scenario that I want is the five major conference champions plus three at large teams. And with one of those spots, somehow, some way guaranteed to a non power five. I, I, cause I, and do you want that or not? I don't think matters because if you're guaranteeing spots to conferences, you're now running into anti-trade crap and you're going to, the same thing that the BCS had to deal with where the government starts getting involved. So you got to avoid that. You have to avoid any governmental interference, any sort of Mm anti-trade interference. So the best way to do that is to say one of these spots is guaranteed to the highest ranked F uh not not uh group of five school as long as they're in the top 15. It is a lot of games. Michigan Bucknut says 
Uh, do you cut the regular season short? That's a lot of games. Uh, so if you do an eight team playoff, it's it's one it's one extra game. One extra for those who keep on winning. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you cut? I, I don't think so. I mean. Yeah, no, I, I, really, I really don't foresee foresee if if it does go to eight teams, I don't really see the possibility of it being cut shorter just because, I mean, it, money. Right. Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 money um, with all of the money coming. Now, one of the things that the NCAA or college football in general is going to have to deal with is if you're adding it's one extra week of playoffs it's four additional games of playoffs money 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 is being made yep at some point at some point some of this is going to have to trickle down to the players Mm -hmm. the more money college football continues to make the more pressure there will be to increase what is being paid to the players. And, and the other thing too, I, why games will not be cut short is because it's only going to be affecting two teams versus 120 teams. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you, well, technically four teams because like the, the teams that lose in the first round are basically just playing their ball game. And then the four teams that move past that are playing either one or two extra games. Yep. Yeah. And I'm still kind of on the fence, what you were saying about your scenario about getting one power, non power five in there. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm kind of leaning more towards what you were saying, just because it kind of similar, like the NCAA tournament, like you got all these, um, minor conferences who who get in and they're just happy to be in <laughs> right and right. then gets to place a number one seed and maybe make a run for it but more often than not or it's a number not two happening mm-hmm. uh <laughs> that pause was for the for the youtube audience uh yeah the <sighs> It doesn't matter if you want it or not, I think is it doesn't matter if I want it or not. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter who wants it. You're avoiding governmental interference. You're you're avoiding having to face. Congress and the anti trade commission is it would that be the SEC? I'm not sure. I'm not guys. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, You're. You're just avoiding a lot of legal heartache by I, now. And, and, but again, there's also then the discussion of, is it a good thing or not? And I think I could make a really great argument in both directions. Is it good to reserve a spot for the group of five? I could take a pro or a con on that. I could tell you why I think it's a great idea. I can tell you why I think it's a terrible idea. But. Ultimately, I think it needs to happen just legally speaking. Mm-hmm. I think six, I think 16 teams is too many right now. Yeah. And it's it's too many, period. You 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 increase it to 16 and you lose sort of the chaotic magic that is the regular season of college football. Yeah, and I think six is too few. Like if you're going to expand, six is too few because you're just then adding two more. And then at that point, you're pretty much just having champions and a non-power five um best of then which would have to be a group of five team again to avoid you're you're talking about five auto bids i mean if you do six teams i if you do six teams there's no need for a committee anymore yeah and and (laughs) unless the committee is just there to seed it and pick the whoever the group of five team is I think I think the sweet number it's eight or ten. That way you could reward the top two with like a a bye week essentially. Is that 
Does the math work out on 10? For... Mm, <laughs> let, me think, let me think that through. Hold on. <laughs> I, hold on. I, I don't know if that math works out. Yeah, no, that doesn't. No. Okay. No, you're right. I ate, uh, Stuart says eight is the sweet spot, and I think it is. Yeah. You don't at anything bigger and you could, you could do 12, which is the, what the NFL has been doing for ever. Uh, but then you're also talking about bye weeks and do you want bye weeks? And I, it's, it's eight to me. Mm -hmm. It's I, 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 it just seems because if you if you start going up to 16 teams, I think at 16, then you might have to start possibly cutting the season shorter because, yeah, I mean, if you if you look at somebody who makes it all the way through, that's 16, 8, 4, 2. That's that's four postseason games then. That's well, four really, postseason well, really games. five, five with their conference championship game. That's and, five games outside of the regular season. And that's also now eight teams playing extra games instead of just four teams playing extra games. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, eight, eight is the absolute sweet spot in my mind. You, uh, Stuart points out, uh, do you really want the committee choosing who gets granted a bye week? Uh, then he says one additional, one additional game isn't too much to ask, which... I, I would say my one of I first I agree, but I think the objection that will come up to that statement, Stuart, is the parents attempting to travel. And I, I do think. Yeah, Stuart, I yeah, paying the players is complicated. I am for paying the players, but I also understand that it's complicated. And if you want to hear how we fix that, go go listen to our episode from season five entitled last, last summer yeah last summer go 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 listen to our episode from season five uh which is called maybe maybe we should play a radical that. plan to fix college football maybe we should play that one one of the in one of the um episodes again just a, a good refresher for everybody <laughs> well i think we should actually probably rework it go okay. back over it see what that 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 yeah that's not a bad idea hey that that's that's one episode for the wasteland <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm I'm all for it. Uh, no reason the NCAA can't pay for the travel of the parents. I agree. 100 percent. Yes. Uh, it, and and again, we're talking about how many teams have to play extra games. Right. So now you're talking about paying to travel parents. Which, you know. That first game, that first game that that's on the parents. but. When you get down to the final four and the final two, then the NCAA can realistically start paying for travel hotel or. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so and that's another reason why going to 16 is difficult. Because. That's again, now eight teams playing what would be an extra game over bowl season. Yep. That's eight sets of parents, you know. A hundred players per team times eight teams. The 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 mat. It's just it gets exponentially worse. So, yeah. And I also have to wonder, Kyle, if we're talking about so eight is eight ideal. Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, I I, I really think so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, cut part of me kind of thinks about like oh maybe rewarding the the top teams for for being the top teams and rewarding them for a, a week off but no i i really think 8 8 is probably the the magic number there now does that come with auto bids yeah <laughs> you you say yes but you don't sound excited when you say yes do you all right so question Auto uh, Stewart says auto bids suck. Two two separate questions re auto bids. Does they do they have to happen in an eight team scenario? Do you want them to happen in an eight team scenario? 
So those are two separate questions. Oh, oh, you're talking about like, like Big Ten always plays this team, or no, 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 conference champions. Oh, so a conference champion always gets in. Yeah, like, like like I was saying before, if you have eight teams, it would be the five yeah. conference champions plus a spot reserved for the group of five, mm-hmm. and then two wild cards. Do you two separate questions? Would it have to happen like that? Would you want it to happen like that? Because I firmly believe it would have to happen like that. It would have to happen. I don't see how if you have a let, let's let's just say yeah, because well, you have to get the conference commissioners to sign off on this first yeah. and foremost. Yeah, let's just say you have let's just say you have Alabama who's undefeated, and then you have Florida who has like three losses. And then Florida gets in, they beat they beat Alabama. They're in with three losses. But then you have other teams who have like one loss who are in two. That could cause just a lot of issues as well. But but they, it also they, gives they, us they did win their conference. But it also gives us a you, you talk about you want consistency. What's more consistent than win your conference and you're in? Yes. It doesn't matter. Perception doesn't matter. The committee doesn't matter. What Herb Street says doesn't matter. None of it matters when your conference and you're in. And I feel like even if fans feel like they're against that, oh God, would it just give you like, it doesn't matter. Oh, Herb Street. I don't care what Herb Street said when the conference and you're in. Oh, did you hear what so and so said? And 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 because of the fact that Ohio State lost to Virginia Tech, and now everyone keeps saying the word albatross over and over and over and over. We, the word albatross now has lost all meaning. Doesn't matter when your conference and you're in. That I think that would give us a certain amount of like mental peace. <laughs> I was about to say, Jared, like you saying that. Did you hear about what Herb should say? You're not going to know. You're blocked from him. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I still have ESPN, baby. Uh, all right, all right, Jared. I think it is. I think this is a good time for us to hear from our sponsors. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about Iron Bean Coffee Company and why you should get some coffee from them. So I told you that they're Ohio based. Uh, more specifically, Toledo. More specifically, Perrysburg. Uh, I told you that all of their beans are USDA organic and fair trade certified, which again, we're talking about integrity here. Uh, the, the, the beans are, you know, if you, if you look into the moral ramifications of coffee beans, it can get actually get pretty ugly, which is why that if you do, if you're wondering what does fair trade certified mean, it means you can drink your coffee with with less guilt in your heart about it. Uh, they're uh, they import all of their beans directly from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and more. Um, value integrity is their core value, and so you're talking about doing things right, even when people aren't looking. That's what this. Know that when you're supporting this company, you're supporting the good guys. You're supporting a Marine-owned, Ohio-based company that is attempting to do everything in the most high-integrity, morally upstanding way possible. So you're buying more than just coffee here. Now you're buying coffee, and by the way, the coffee is delicious. Let's not get... The coffee is amazing because it's always micro-roasted. It's always fresh roasted to order. You're getting the freshest, most high quality coffee you could ever hope to get. Because integrity, all that integrity, that's not only is that morally the right thing to do, but also it delivers the best possible coffee. Know that when you're supporting the Iron Bean Coffee Company, that you're supporting a company that's doing everything the right way and that that translates to the taste of the coffee cup. 
So you can find a bunch of amazing coffees. I'll, I'll, I'll go over what some of the coffees are in the next ad read over at the uh, ironbeancoffee.com. That's actually just ironbeancoffee.com. I threw a V in there for some reason. That's that's incorrect. Ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, mentioned a couple of the seasons earlier on. Um, mentioned that they are based out of Finley, Ohio, um, more specifically as I'm going to follow suit with Jared, more, more specifically in Cary, Ohio. Uh, <laughs> uh, just great seasons. I mean, he's been a sponsor for us for a year and a half now. Um, great guy, um, even better seasonings <laughs> that, Ooh, that he develops that, in his um, that's Mad debatable. Mad. Cause he's a really great guy. <laughs> he is. He is. No. Um, I mean, if you want to meet him in person, check out his, uh, his social medias, Twitter, Facebook, to find out where he and his food truck are heading to. Um, I know that my parents in the past met, met with him. Um, I actually got a picture from him of my parents and the mad Canadian, um, from last summer. You're looking when, at it. Can you, can you throw it on camera real quick? Um, going to reach up here. Yeah. Right here. They are. Yep. Oh, well, Guest yep, appearance right by yep right here they they're all at the food truck and they have their masks up and they're all all getting some good good food at the Mad Canadians um food truck uh, so if you are in Northwest Ohio be sure to check them up it's some really really good food and he uses those exact seasonings uh, in his food truck so check out all those seasonings uh, such as the Kerry steak the old fashioned, the snoring heat, the smoked, the S and P bud, all of those and much, much more at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the mad Canadian BBQ.com promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian barbecue company where they have your butts covered. All right, Kyle, this is where we decide where to take the show next. Do we keep talking playoff stuff? Or do we, we have a lot of ask Sloopcast questions. Do we hit those hard? I say we do. Let's, let's do this. Ask Sloopcast. Let's, let's, um, we have an entire off season to talk about expansion, right? <laughs> we do. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we're going to just a wide variety of things in here. We, we told, from, we, we, yeah, we told everyone just mix bag card. Uh, who's no longer listening. Um, a live Slider. chat here. Uh, what what Big Ten team can benefit the most from one of the three quarterbacks doing an in conference transfer this summer? Uh, I feel like Michigan's quarterback situation is a complete dumpster fire right now. Yes, Michigan, absolutely. That's that's the first thing that came to came to my mind. I Milton, I don't think the, by the I don't way th- just I don't confirmed think, I don't, that he's transferring to Tennessee this week. Okay. Uh, we we knew he was leaving Michigan. We've known that for a while, but uh, he's making the somewhat lateral move of going to Tennessee. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, what other teams really benefit? I can re- really get their team to the next level with a good quarterback. I, I just don't know. Um, I'm not sure what Penn State's quarterback situation is right now. Yeah, because um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to think of the the um the I West. Side. I, yeah, like, I, like I think Wisconsin's set. Maybe. Uh, uh maybe. Nebraska, I think, has a lot of issues, a lot of questions on their track. team. Um I, I don't know. I, yeah, Michigan, I think, is is the correct answer. Well, yeah. it's sort of like who can real who's even in the position to make the next level? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, kind of similar question here, Stuart. Is there a way all three quarterbacks at Ohio State see meaningful playing time as Buckeyes without the others getting injured? Stuart's learning how to ask questions because he's 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 starting to phrase it. He's he always knows I'm looking for loopholes in the questions. <laughs> Meaning he adds, he adds meaningful playing time, meaningful, not just playing time, meaningful playing time as mm-hmm. Buckeyes, no injuries. So he, he covered all of my, my normal caveats there. Uh, yeah. They're, they're learning Kyle. <laughs> Short answer for no. me, at least. No, no, 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Two of them, two of them, yeah, possibility. I, I, I really don't three, even, I, I think Ohio State learned their lesson on that. Yeah. I hope so. Anyway. Well, during, well, during their time at, at Ohio State, not necessarily this year. So oh. there's the loophole. There's the loophole. Maybe not necessarily this year, just that's, in general. That that's well, that may not even be a loophole. That might be his point. Yeah. Um Kyle McCord's gonna have to deal with uh Ewers. So yeah. that's gonna be because I don't think McCord's getting the job this year. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Of course, if if he does, then I don't think the other two guys see meaningful playing time. Yep. Um yeah, and Kyle McCord, as great as he looks right now, and as you know, he, Quentin Ewers is coming. So that will be, mm-hmm. I think, a, a quarterback battle that makes this quarterback battle look tame, in all <laughs> honesty. Yeah, I know there's some rumblings about Ewers, but we're just. It's fine. Listen, it's fine. Texas fine. gave up. If you're worried about Ewers transferring, know that Texas gave up. And this Ewers grew up as a Longhorn fan, mm-hmm. like well, and especially and especially loving, the, loving the Longhorns. Well, and especially too, like who's going to be the head coach at Texas? I forget. I they hired someone. I forget. Okay. I I, <laughs> I honestly don't remember who they hired. <laughs> um. Wow. I'm drawing a blank. Um. On who it is right now. It's um. Yeah. It's um. Sarkeesian. That's right. God. You'd think I yeah. Yeah. Especially, and, especially with Sarkeesian yeah. coming. I mean, and you know he and he tried that he runs to. Yeah. And he tried. Yeah. N- know that he tried. That he tried to go after you because yours the rumors were that he didn't like Herman. Okay, Herman's gone. Sarkeesian's in. Now, at this point, Ewers had already committed to Ohio State. And Sarkeesian tried. And then they gave up and they went and got someone else who's also like either a high four or a five star quarterback. Texas gave up. If Texas gave up, if if, if Texas went after Ewers and said, nah, he's solid to Ohio State, then you can believe he's solid to Ohio State. So. Don't don't worry about yours. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I, I picked a couple here. You want to you want to pick a question from our list here? Oh, well, I wasn't. Uh, Austin asks, what's worse, an upset stomach that won't go away or a persistent migraine? I told you the, the questions were going to get wacky. Uh, I would say a migraine personally. Yeah, I, I think a persisting migraine to me. I, yeah, I mean, ne- neither are fun. No. No. All right, uh, let's see here. Let's stick with Austin here. If you were the Ohio State AD and could map out your dream schedule, how would, you, how would that look for you? You have the freedom to choose home away, but, but all eight Big Ten games, but must have eight Big Ten games and four non-conference. Isn't the Big Ten schedule currently at it's nine and three. It's nine. Yeah, it's not eight and four. It's nine and three. Um, man, map out a dream schedule. I feel like this, this Kyle. Yes. Do we, do we put this in the wasteland bucket? I feel like this deserves a great deal of. Well, well, I mean. Right now, Indiana, Penn State, Maryland, Rutgers, Michigan, Michigan State. Those, those, those are happening right now. Unless, unless we're getting well, rid of on. divisions. He he doesn't say that. All right. He just says. Now he said eight. I'm I'm going to correct it to nine. He just says nine Big Ten games. He doesn't say anything about divisions. Mm-hmm. I have the freedom to choose home and away. So guess what? We're playing all the games in the shoe. <laughs> that's that's just happening. Every he game. gave me that freedom. That's happening. So I'm going to stick with one big out of conference game. And if you're going to let me pick it, fuck it. Let's go Bama. Fuck it. Let's go Bama. Uh, Then we can do three or no two. We can do two lesser games non. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do one 
medium game, and I'm going to keep the money in state and make that Cincinnati. And then I'm going to pick a Mac school, uh, pick, pick an Ohio Mac school, uh, Kent, Bowling Green, Toledo, Ohio. Let's go Ohio. You know what? You know what? No, I want to go to an Ohio State game. So their away game is coming over to North Carolina. <laughs> like that should have been a few years ago. Okay, but that's your dream schedule. I'm doing my dream schedule. So <laughs> Kyle, Kyle's ducking Bama. That's what he's doing. No, I never said I was ducking Bama. <laughs> are, so are you doing North Carolina instead of Cincinnati? Or? Um, instead of like a mech school. Oh, you're, so you're going three pretty big games there. Why not? All right. <laughs> um, now we have to do a perfect Big Ten schedule. And by the, all the games are in the shoe. He told me I could pick my home and away games. They're all in the shoe. Um, so you got to play Michigan, got to play Penn State. Um, well, I, I want, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to. He doesn't specify, Kyle. He doesn't specify. All right. When? When? I was going to say have have Michigan no, the I'm last going, game. I'm going. Then, I'm going sillier but, than that. But but in November though, the South's got to come. Got to come north. <laughs> oh, for force Bama instead of playing an FCS school. Got to come up north. So before, so you want to play Bama right before Michigan? No, let's let's say let's say like the because first that that's when Bama has an open schedule spot. I don't care. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> All right, Kyle. First, dream schedule, Big mm-hmm. Ten schedule. Yep. Week um, one of the Big Ten schedule. I'm playing Penn State. Yep. All right. Weeks. Two through eight. It's Ohio State and Michigan. I want that all time record and I want it now. <laughs> so we're playing we're playing Michigan eight times. And like we like we won it last it. year. Screw like screw, we, screw like it. we won it last year because because we never even got one. And by the way, We'll even go. We'll even play half of them in the big house. It's fine. I've given up on the play all the games in the shoe. No, I, that that's not even fair. So, non conference, I'm going Ohio, Cincinnati, and Bama. Big t- in any sort of scheduling order. That that's not important to me. Um, the but then the Big Ten schedule nine games. Week one, Penn State got to play Penn State. Week two. And it's in the shoe, by the way. Week two, Michigan in the shoe. Week three, Ohio State goes to Ann Arbor. And then just repeat that. I want that all-time record, and I want it right now. That that That's it. I want that all-time record, and I want it right now. No, no, mine, like, playing that big game team from the South coming up North, like the first week in no- November, but then like the week before Michigan, uh, we'll, we'll play like a, a Rutgers or an Illinois team right before, right before um, the Michigan game. You're giving Michigan too much respect. <laughs> if you, if you got to give me a softball before a, a big time opponent, let it be, I don't know, Penn state or Wisconsin. Like, Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't fear Michigan anymore. In fact, Michigan should be the softball lead up to the conference championship game. Oh wait, it already is. It already is. All right. Um, all right. Let me, let's get back to some of the questions here. Uh, Buckeye Zach, why shouldn't Toledo just be conceded back to the Northland of garbage? I mean, South Michigan. Uh, because of the iron bean coffee company. Yes. It's an Ohio based company. Yeah. The better question is, why shouldn't we give the rest? Of, why, why shouldn't we give the main? I'm not talking about the UP. I've heard a lot of great things about the UP. We're giving the UP back to <laughs> easy. I live in South Michigan. Uh Oh, uh, well, I'm about to give you free health care because I'm giving you to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of great things about the UP. We're keeping the UP in the United States. But I think I'm giving the rest of Michigan to Canada. 
what was that? There, there was a, there was a Bugs Bunny cartoon where he, where Bugs Bunny takes a saw and starts sawing off Florida. We're yeah. doing that to Michigan. If we can just draw the border right there. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, Nomad. How many eggs per day is too many? Um, I mean, as far as health goes, I think it's one of the health, like that whole, everyone was like, oh no, eggs and cholesterol. Then we decided that wasn't real. Uh, I, I think eggs are a great source of protein. I say go for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you need variety in your diet, obviously. Yeah. But if your main source of protein is egg, that's fine. I'm all for it. Uh, I know eggs aren't vegan, but are they vegetarian? Because I feel like as long as the egg isn't fertilized. Guys, hmm. I, I need to hear from some farmers in the chat. I YouTube comments. I or maybe not farmers, maybe uh maybe some vegetarians. Are eggs vegetarian? I know they aren't vegan, but are they vegetarian? I don't know. All right, Jared, here here's here's a question that I don't think we ever really answered that um Kabuto asks us. Ohio State media outlets all say we don't speculate on transfers. Mm-hmm. Why we is say that? the same thing? How 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 is it harmful to just talk about it? After all, people talk about NFL trades all the time. If it's because players aren't paid, will it change with NIL? All right, these are great questions. One, I don't speculate on transfers. Partially, yes, because the payers aren't paid. Like they're amateur athletes, and I think there are lines you don't cross with amateur athletes mm-hmm. when it comes to professional athletes like you get paid big money you've put yourself in the spotlight with a college athlete like they're just trying to may, maybe they're just trying to get a free education they don't all but most do have nfl dreams but yeah i think it's just like it's it's a line you don't cross with amateurs in my mind uh, especially in why don't you talk about it Because you're essentially saying, hey, you, amateur athlete who's not getting paid, you aren't good enough to be here based off of my speculation. And I think it's different because we talk all a lot about, you know, will this quarterback trade? Because we have talked about, you know, if Kyle McCord wins the starting job, then does that mean that Miller or Stroud could transfer? And we talk about I'm okay talking about that scenario because in that case, I'm talking about Miller and Stroud both being so good that they deserve a start a starting spot somewhere else. So that that to me, I think is okay to talk about because one, quarterback transfers are so common, and two, because you're put it's a it's coming from a positive place. Hey, Miller and or Stroud are too good to sit on the bench their entire college careers and therefore are risks to transfer. On the other end of that spectrum, if you say, hey, you. You're a fourth year player who hasn't started yet. Get the hell out. You know what I mean? That that's a different line, in my opinion. And I don't think that changes with NIL personally. It's it's similar to like when we when we say to about uh, prospects as well. Don't don't message don't right. message these players who are still in high school. It's it's essentially similar to. Yeah, I yeah I agree. Don't 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 talk to high school kids unless unless you're actually being paid to be a recruiting analyst. Don't talk to the high school kids. That that's the line. Don't. Unless you're a paid recruiting analyst, don't talk to high school kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it just keeps getting the the further back you go in their life, the more severe the rules get. The second they get an NFL paycheck, then it becomes more and more fair game to yep. speculate about their careers. Yep. All right, Jared, what question do you want to answer next here? All right, Kyle. Uh, why do you choose to make everyone's morning too early by recording? And also someone else asks the similar question. I can't find it. How early? I think it was Austin. Yeah. 
How early is too early to record a podcast? Why do you keep making me get up so early to record a podcast, Kyle? Because real life stuff. Okay. <laughs> last last week it was because of a flight. This week it's because of you know, real life stuff. Yeah, real. You can just say real life <laughs> stuff. You're not. I I I personally like to do it like after afternoon on Sunday. It just we're a little bit more awake. A little bit more, a little bit more awake, a little bit more Adderall circling through my blood, a little more caffeine circling through my blood. Also, because we always used to do the Monday podcast, like Sunday mornings, like fairly early. About this time. Maybe a little bit later, but yeah. And and then like news would break on Sundays. Yeah. (laughs) And so we just. Also, I'm much more efficient at editing the podcast now which is to say that I don't really anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to it just the post-production takes a lot less effort from me. Therefore we can push it much later. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see here. I know we're running short on time here, so I'm going to pick just a few other questions. Um, let's do one from, cause I don't think we've answered one from Brawley. So the top one here, Jared. Yeah. Um, what is the best old school Disney Channel original movie? I never got into the Disney Channel original. I don't have an opinion here. I Maybe the one above that, though, Kyle, I think is a little bit more. I think a little bit more in our comfort zone. Uh, well, no, I guess that was in response to someone else's question, but he's talking about Hey Arnold, which I think is one of like the goat cartoons. Mm-hmm. So let's let's kind of a- ask that, like, what what is your v- Mount Rushmore of cartoon shows? Are we are we like kids? Are we including adult animation in this? Uh, that I think is an important aspect. Of that oh, oh, I, guess, I guess the question is like, give me where was it here? Yeah. Um, give me your Nickelodeon, Disney and Cartoon Network shows. OK. All right, and we're when we say Cartoon Network shows, we aren't including Adult Swim. Just I'm I'm drawing that line. So Disney, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, not including Adult Swim. We're staying in like the children's entertainment realm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this quick, and I might regret it. But I, I feel like it's Adventure Time, SpongeBob. Um. I, Hey Arnold and Rocco. I'm doing that real quick off the top of my head. Um, I might have to. I might disagree with myself if I put some real thought into it, but I think it's Adventure Time, SpongeBob, Hey Arnold and Rocco's Modern Life. Mm. Up there for me, uh, just just because of nostalgia, I got to go with uh, Chip and Dale. Okay. Yeah, I didn't represent Disney at all in my list, so <laughs> I got I got I gotta go with I gotta go with Chip and Dale in there. Uh a really good one that I liked um especially um later in my childhood was Dexter's Lab. That's another good one. Dexter's Lab was another good one. Um even younger, and it's still still a really good one. Um Rugrats was a good one growing up as well. As my young Young Life. Yeah, Rugrats, one of the three original Nicktoons, along with uh, Mm -hmm. Doug and Ren and Stimpy, which was uh, thrown out there by Stuart. Uh, He also throws out Tailspin and DuckTales. Oh, DuckTales. Now, that's that's in the WB universe, which was not included in the question, but I will count it. Um, And if we're going to expand into that universe, we have to talk about Animaniacs. Uh, we have to talk about Darkwing Duck, which actually may have been Disney. I'm I'm now questioning that, um, which I think mm-hmm. we're also great. Uh, let's see. I feel like I'm Tiny Toons. That's the one I'm missing uh, in the Warner Brother Tiny universe Toons. from from that same sort of 90s kid era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so we'll. I think I think there's that's a good list there. Uh, any other questions you want to try to answer right now? We are at the hour mark right now. Uh, let's see. Let's can can we get can we get one more football question? 
All right. Uh, oh, one more football question if we look here. Uh, non-football uh, question, but Austin asks, like, what's our ideal weather-wise? We don't have time for that one. But he then does follow that up with, met, uh, is the metric system superior and why does the u.s not adopt it listen if the pandemic has taught us anything about the united states is the last thing you need the last thing you do when you want to convince the united states to do something is to tell them they need to do it <laughs> so the more everyone says the united states needs to get on the metric system the longer it's going to take to happen mm -hmm. because that's us we we yeah. enjoy we being rebels and we enjoy stubborn. flipping off authority that's very deeply and we we're literally a country of a revolution we're literally a country that looked at england the biggest empire of that era and said hey we're independent now try and stop us the, it's, the, it's US, the, the u.s is that stubborn child that just yeah. will not listen i mean basically and but we're also just like yeah i, I it's and I'm quite frankly, I love that about us. This is not a criticism of the United States. I kind of like that. Fuck you. Don't tell me what to do. Attitude. Most of the time, I feel like a, a pandemic wise. I feel like maybe we, we should have not been quite like that. <laughs> but generally, I love that about us. I think that's where a lot of our creativity comes from. And I think yeah. that's where a lot of our innovation comes from. I, I, I love that about this country. Didn't enjoy it so much during the pandemic. I feel like maybe we should have. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> last, last, last question here. And it is football related. Yeah. If Teton fails into in, in, fails to impress this year with, with Jim Harbaugh headed further north to the CFL to start over. That would be great. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think Harbaugh to the NFL is just going to have to happen eventually. I, I agree, especially after going, what, what, what did they go last year? What, what did they go? Oh yeah. They went two and four last year. <laughs> they went two and four last and like, okay, pandemic and all of that. But if you look, Harbaugh signs a contract extension this off season, everyone's like, well, how could he did a, did a contract extension? Look at the, look at the contract that they signed. The it's basically built without like huge buyouts or punishments for either of the parties. It, it's a very easy contract to get out of. Harbaugh didn't Harbaugh didn't want to leave Michigan. And Michigan didn't want to admit that they made a mistake with Harbaugh. So they're going to sign that contract extension, but it's very easy to break is, is, the real one takeaway to take from the new Michigan contract with Harbaugh. It's very easy to break. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, I think Michigan Bucknut says if he could have gone, it would have been last year. I think he burned that bridge in the NFL. You don't burn bridges in the NFL. If, if an NFL team thinks you are the key to winning, they will sign you. All right, Jared, I think that's it. I think it is time to wrap up the show. All right. Uh, yeah, time to wrap up the show. Uh, make sure to check out the sloopcast.com. It's a, just a campsite. If you don't know campsite, it's just like a, a link aggregator. It's just a campsite page that will direct you to all of the other Sloopcast things. Uh, it, to our Spotify spot, to our YouTube spot, to our uh, Apple Music spot our merch stores. I'm wearing this, which um, I don't think has been taken down by Ohio state yet. Now you might say, Jared, why would Ohio state claim that shirt and not Nintendo? Cause Ohio state's lawyers are dicks. And I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to get into it. So if there's anything you want to get over at the Sloopcast merch store, which by the way, merch.thesloopcast.com, you should probably do that now because Ohio State likes to take my stuff down, whether or not it actually violates their trademarks or not. Because they're dicks. Uh, so you should probably uh, you should probably pick something quickly, I guess, is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, that, that's all I feel like talking about. Uh, just if, if you're not already following us on YouTube, please do so. If you're not already following us on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube, please do that. Subscribe on both. It's appreciated. We also have social media stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Kyle and I are slowly moving away from Twitter and into our Discord. So if you want to interact with Kyle and I, like Twitter's fine. I still get notifications. I haven't like removed it from my phone or anything, but I'm not, I'm not spending a lot of time on Twitter anymore because it's toxic and I don't like it. So move, uh, join us over on the Discord where it is considerably less toxic and uh, feel, feels much more like a, a family of people with common interest as opposed to a shouting match. Uh, and you can do that. Just download the Discord app to your phone. And then join us at discord.thesloopcast.com. And there are a bunch of channels. Some of them are premium channels, but the vast majority of them are not. Uh, you will find absolute entertainment and fun and community in the free channels. Don't feel like you have to sign up to enjoy the Discord because that is not true. Now, the premium channels are, are also pretty great. We talk about cryptocurrency. Uh, we talk about fitness. We talk about recruiting. That one's behind the paywall. Uh, so, so there are uh, the live chat that you see if you're watching on YouTube, the live chat that you see down at the bottom of the page here, uh, that that is behind the paywall, but it's uh, most of the stuff isn't. And you'll absolutely find community and fun and Ohio State conversation, whether or not you sign up at patreon.thesloopcast.com. And that's how you get for three dollars a month. You get early access to episodes. You get the uh, premium access in the discord. You get lots of cool stuff. Uh, you can join the guys down here who listen to us live. Um, so you can listen live. You also get early access to the actual recording, the actual audio podcast of the show. And you can just like listen to us record it live as it's happening and make fun of us while we do it and ask us questions while we do it. So all of that's for like $3 a month and you can pay, treat it like Nike, just do it. Yeah. And by the way, you can save, I think it's 12%. Don't, don't make, don't swear. I'm not swearing to 12, but it's something in that area. You can save 12% off of your Patreon subscription by paying for the year up front. So $3 times 12 is like $36. Uh, you save some sort of percent. Is it 10% Stuart says Stuart says it's 10%. So you save, so it's like, what, like $32 to sign up for an entire year of premium access to the sleep cast. What, 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 what are you, what are you doing by not doing that? Seriously? What do you, it's $32 for an entire year of premium access. Ser come on. Seriously. Seriously. You spent more on Amazon this week on something that you forgot you bought until it showed up. And you know that's true. All right, Kyle, that's that's all of the plugging I feel like doing, which I think is the second time I said that. The first time was a lie. This one's the truth. Uh, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Um, two things. Um, Musa Jallo, who transferred out of Ohio State, has found his home with the Charlotte 49ers. Kyle. As the person who's responsible for everything that happens in North Carolina, how the hell is a 49er, which is uh, a gold rush thing. It's, so that's why the 49ers of San Francisco are the 49ers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How is someone in Charlotte a 49er? I don't know. No, you, you need to answer for this. I don't know. Okay. Uh, congrats to the Musa Jallo. I hope he uh, finds success in the and, I'm going to say inappropriately named Charlotte 49ers <laughs> and crew stadium, the new crew stadium. I, I put a picture here, Jared, if you haven't seen it, sod is in the sod is in, they're watering it down. They're getting it to appropriate temperature levels now. Cause I guess that they have new technology where they can have the, the grass temperature controlled. It's not new for the record. Okay. Well, <laughs> they didn't have it at the current crew stadium <laughs> well, they didn't have a lot of things at the current crew stadium uh, they, yeah. they like, also don't have 90 plus beer options <laughs> at, at the old crew stadium <laughs> no uh the uh 
Uh, NFL teams, especially the northern NFL teams, have had heated fields for a very long yeah. time because it's looking because. good. It's looking good. It's it July. I think it's like I don't. I don't think it's the first weekend. I think it's the second weekend in July. First first uh, crew game at the new stadium in downtown Columbus. Uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. I got my tickets. I'm excited. Yes. All right. That's that is all I have for today, Jared. All right, everyone. Tonight's ending music. Today's ending music. I don't know why I always say tonight. I, I don't I don't care when you listen to this. Uh, today's ending music will be brought to you by the Raging Nathans, which, by the way, and I don't know it. No one cares about this, but me is our second in a row from the Dayton based record label Rad Girlfriend. I check out Rad Girlfriend just as a as a record label. That's a thing you should do. Uh, but this band, much much like the Dopamines from last week's episode, uh, have a pre order out on the Rad Girlfriend's record label. Uh, these are once again the Raging Nathans. The name of both the song we're playing, which is the the one song they have out from this album so far, and the name of the album is called waste my heart you can pre-order the album now it's available i i wrote gen four on in the notes i'm pretty sure i met june four on the <laughs> in the notes uh so the new album comes out june 4th but you can pre-order it now on the rad girlfriends Bandcamp page which i will link to in the notes don't worry i got links for you uh so check the show notes for that link um yeah uh, check out the Dayton based Raging Nathans. And once again, the name of the song is Waste My Heart. And with all of that being said, I encourage you to listen to local music, drink local beer, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Raging Nathans. How's it going, YouTube? Hope everyone enjoyed today's episode. I totally just zoned out there for a second. <laughs> Man, I totally forgot, Jared. Four yeah. of the past five, it's not going to happen this year, uh, but four of the past five NFL drafts, Ohio State has had the top defensive player drafted. Uh, yeah, look at the look at the defensive MVPs. I think the last five years in the NFL. Um, I think four of the last five, if I'm remembering correctly, four of the last five defensive rookies of the year were Ohio State players. Uh, Chase Young got it last year. Uh, I think Joey Bosa got it his rookie year. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I mean, it's just crazy. You got the Bosa brothers, Young and uh, Denzel Ward were the four. OK, and that's four of the last five. Yes. OK, thank you. And then, and then the other one was it was a guy named um, uh, Garrett. <laughs> that's it. A guy named Garrett. Uh, that's all I'm drawing want. a blank on his first name. I was hoping uh, you're going to fill me in there, Jared. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you actually looked it up. You pulled that from memory, and I respect you for it. I now. did. I, I appreciate it. Yes, Miles Garrett. Thank you. Miles Garrett. Oh, Miles God. with a Y. <laughs> yeah. Are, are, is the name Miles ever spelled with an I? I feel like if it's a name, it's always spelled with the Y. Mm -hmm. But I'm a terrible speller, so what the hell am I even trying to talk about right now? In pronunciating. Well, that too. That Everyone knows that already. Be, of course, if you follow me on Twitter, you can also see that I don't ever proofread anything. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and end today's episode, Jared. Once again, I'd like to thank the Raging Nathans for sponsoring. No, they weren't sponsoring. They... <laughs> I'm going to try that again. I'm not editing this out for the record, but I am I am going to try it again. We are starting over, but I'm not editing this out. Once again, I'd like to thank the Raging Nathans for ending today's show, and I'd once again like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, I told you why 
you should you should shop at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, but now I'm just gonna we're gonna talk about some of the coffees. Uh, they have a bunch of flavored coffees out under the Murder Coffee line. Um, if you're into flavored coffees, you can check a bunch of those out. They got like Red Velvet and Blueberry Crumble and a bunch of really cool flavored coffees. Um, I'm personally I can be hit or miss with the flavored coffees. Uh, I do like a grog and they do have a grog. So, okay. They, they, you could probably check out the grog. Uh, but uh, some of the non-flavored coffees, we talked about the, the cast iron, which is a medium roast. There's also the rider die, which is a medium roast. Uh, it's a gentle, distinctive version of the classic American cup. Uh, Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee beans, superb smoothness and flavor. Uh, there's also, if we're sticking to the medium roast, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light with notes of cherry, milk chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose petal. Uh, there's the Rocco, which is available both medium and dark. Um, there is the, the Loki, which is a, a medium light roast. Uh, wet process blend with higher caffeine, lower in acidity, rich tasting, filled with fragrance, citrus and floral dominates the taste of this blend. Uh, then there's the Thor, which is like a medium dark. Uh, so if you're just depending upon which Greek god you're more into, there's also an Odin if you want to go straight to dead. So lots of great coffees over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I don't have time to talk about all of them because the selection's that great, but uh, if you're if you're just like I don't know which one to try, you can get the whole shebang, which is all of the Iron Bean branded coffees. I don't think they have the murder coffees in these yet, but all of the Iron Bean branded coffees in like small little sample bags, and you can get that ground or whole bean. Um, and so you can just sort of find the coffee that's right for you. And if you do find the coffee that's right for you, uh, and if you just maybe that one or two that are like your favorites, uh, you can save money with a subscription a subscribe and save service. And you can find details for all of this stuff at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mac Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, Mention about who they were, some of the seasonings. Now, let me tell you about the savings they can have when you order from Mac Canadian over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. And that is the box sets that they have. So if you go to their website, again, the MedCanadianBBQ.com, head on over to products, box sets. There are three box sets that you can choose from um, over at the website. You have the whole hog, which is one of each of the 13, I think it's 13 uh, seasonings that the Mad Canadian so. has, has over at... Um, so far. What's that? So far. So far. Yes. More, more coming. Um you got the sweet heat, which I consider the uh, it, it's it's a great chicken wing set. It has the four horsemen, the discord, the old fashioned and the two border. You have the or you have the just send it, which is the most versatile seasoning. It's the S&P bud. It's a, your good salt and pepper blend, the Sonoran heat, the Cajun and the smoked. Um, check those three. You, you, you save on all of them eat any box sets and you can save 10% more by using that promo code sloopcast10 sloopcast10 for 10% more off your entire order. Make any barbecue company where he has your butts covered. Stick me. Hold on. The Paul is in the way. I can't get to the stop. Can't get to the stop. There we go. Bye everyone. <laughs> Make 